Today is June 14th. I'm Serena, and welcome to the Seven Streams Bible Reading Method. We're in the prophetic stream today reading from the book of Jeremiah, and we'll cover chapters 22 to 24 in the New American Standard Bible. Jeremiah 22 Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah, and there speak this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, who sits on David's throne, you and your servants and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, Do justice and righteousness, and deliver the one who has been robbed from the power of his oppressor. Also, do not mistreat or do violence to the stranger, the orphan, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you men will indeed perform this thing, then kings will enter the gates of this house, sitting in David's place on his throne, riding in chariots and on horses, even the king himself, and his servants and his people. But if you will not obey these words, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that this house will become a desolation. For thus says the Lord concerning the house of the king of Judah, You are like Gilead to me, like the summit of Lebanon. Yet most assuredly, I will make you like a wilderness, like cities which are not inhabited. For I will set apart destroyers against you, each with his weapons, and they will cut down your choicest cedars and throw them on the fire. Many nations will pass by this city, and they will say to one another, Why has the Lord done this to this great city? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the covenant of the Lord their God, and bowed down to other gods and served them. Do not weep for the dead or mourn for him, But weep continually for the one who goes away, for he will never return or see his native land. For thus says the Lord in regard to Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, who became king in the place of Josiah his father, who went forth from this place. He will never return there, but in the place where they led him captive, there he will die and not see this land again. Woe to him who builds his house without righteousness and his upper rooms without justice, who uses his neighbor's services without pay and does not give him his wages, who says, I will build myself a roomy house with spacious upper rooms and cut out its windows, paneling it with cedar and painting it bright red. Do you become a king because you are competing in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He pled the cause of the afflicted and needy. Then it was well. Is not that what it means to know me, declares the Lord? But your eyes and your heart are intent only upon your own dishonest gain and on shedding innocent blood and on practicing oppression and extortion. Therefore, thus says the Lord in regard to Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. They will not lament for him, alas, my brother, or alas, sister. They will not lament for him, alas, for the master, or alas, for his splendor. He will be buried with a donkey's burial, dragged off and thrown out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out, and lift up your voice in Bashan. Cry out also from Abarim, for all your lovers have been crushed. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your practice from your youth, that you have not obeyed my voice. The wind will sweep away all your shepherds, and your lovers will go into captivity then you will surely be ashamed and humiliated because of all your wickedness. You who dwell in Lebanon, nested in the cedars, how you will groan when pangs come upon you, pain like a woman in childbirth. As I live, declares the Lord, 
even though Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were a signet ring on my right hand, yet I would pull you off, and I will give you over into the hand of those who are seeking your life, yes, into the hand of those whom you dread, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. I will hurl you and your mother who bore you into another country where you were not born, and there you will die. But as for the land to which they desire to return, they will not return to it. Is this man, Kaniah, a despised, shattered jar? Or is he an undesirable vessel? Why have he and his descendants been hurled out and cast into a land that they had not known? O land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Write this man down childless, a man who will not prosper in his days, for no man of his descendants will prosper sitting on the throne of David or ruling again in Judah. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the shepherds who are tending my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them. Behold, I am about to attend to you for the evil of your deeds, declares the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and bring them back to their pasture, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will also raise up shepherds over them, and they will tend them, and they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is his name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they will no longer say, As the Lord lives, who brought up the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led back the descendants of the household of Israel from the north land and from all the countries where I had driven them, then they will live on their own soil. As for the prophets, my heart is broken within me. All my bones tremble. I have become like a drunken man, even like a man overcome with wine, because of the Lord and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers, for the land mourns because of the curse. The pastures of the wilderness have dried up. Their course also is evil, and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are polluted. Even in my house I have found their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore their way will be like slippery paths to them, they will be driven away into the gloom and fall down in it. For I will bring calamity upon them, the year of their punishment, declares the Lord. Moreover, among the prophets of Samaria I saw an offensive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. Also, among the prophets of Jerusalem I have seen a horrible thing, the committing of adultery and walking in falsehood, and they strengthen the hands of evildoers, so that no one has turned back from his wickedness. All of them have become to me like Sodom, and her inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I am going to feed them wormwood, and make them drink poisonous water, for from the prophets of Jerusalem, pollution has gone forth into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, The Lord has said, You will have peace. 
And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say, Calamity will not come upon you. But who has stood in the counsel of the Lord, that he should see and hear his word? Who has given heed to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath, even a whirling tempest. It will swirl down on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has performed and carried out the purposes of his heart. In the last days, you will clearly understand it. I did not send these prophets, but they ran. I did not speak to them, but they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have announced my words to my people and would have turned them back from their evil way and from their evil deeds. Am I a God who is near, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can a man hide himself in hiding places so I do not see him? declares the Lord. Do I not fill the heavens and the earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy falsely in my name, saying, I had a dream. I had a dream. How long? Is there anything in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy falsehood, even these prophets of the deception of their own heart, who intend to make my people forget my name, by their dreams, which they relate to one another, just as their fathers forgot my name because of Baal? The prophet who has a dream may relate his dream, but let him who has my word speak my word in truth. What does straw have in common with grain, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer which shatters a rock? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from each other. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare. The Lord declares. Behold, I am against those who have prophesied false dreams, declares the Lord, and related them and led my people astray by their falsehoods and reckless boasting. Yet I did not send them or command them, nor do they furnish this people the slightest benefit, declares the Lord. Now when this people or the prophet or a priest asks you, saying, What is the oracle of the Lord? Then you shall say to them, What oracle? The Lord declares, I will abandon you. Then as for the prophet or the priest or the people who say, The oracle of the Lord, I will bring punishment upon that man and his household. Thus will each of you say to his neighbor and to his brother, What has the Lord answered? Or, What has the Lord spoken? For you will no longer remember the oracle of the Lord, because every man's own word will become the oracle, and you have perverted the words of the living God, the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus you will say to that prophet, What has the Lord answered you? And what has the Lord spoken? For if you say, The oracle of the Lord, surely thus says the Lord. Because you said this word, The oracle of the Lord, I have also sent to you, saying, You shall not say, The oracle of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will surely forget you and cast you away from my presence, along with the city which I gave you and your fathers. I will put an everlasting reproach on you and an everlasting humiliation, which will not be forgotten. After Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the officials of Judah with the craftsmen and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon, the Lord showed me, Behold, two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, like first ripe figs, and the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten due to rottenness. Then the Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the bad figs, very bad, which cannot be eaten due to rottenness. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, 
Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Like these good figs, so I will regard as good the captives of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans. For I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them up and not overthrow them, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. I will give them a heart to know me, for I am the Lord, and they will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with their whole heart. But like the bad figs which cannot be eaten due to rottenness, indeed, thus says the Lord, so I will abandon Zedekiah, king of Judah and his officials, and the remnant of Jerusalem who remain in this land, and the ones who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will make them a terror and an evil for all the kingdoms of the earth, as a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse in all places where I will scatter them. I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence upon them until they are destroyed from the land which I gave to them and their forefathers. Dear Lord, the cost of disobedience is so grave. Give us hearts of obedience. We offer up to you as the song says, Here's my heart, O take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. We started in chapter 22, which is a warning to King Jehoiakim. He reigned until 598 BC, when the Babylonians were at the door, and the first, not the final, captivity began for Judeans. The final caravan of captives occurred 12 years later in 586 BC, when Zedekiah was king. Speaking of Zedekiah, all inference points to him being the one spoken to in Jeremiah 22 too. Hear the word of the Lord, O king. Zedekiah ended up witnessing the finale in time, but the literature of this chapter takes us through a listing of the five final kings that cover the last 50 years of the kingdom during its demise. King Josiah gave goodness a fair effort, but the other four were wretched, demented, and duplicitous to the core. They were unjust, oppressive, robbers, violent, cruel to orphans and widows, and treacherous to the innocent. God gives a last offer to change their ways before ruining the place. God had offered always to preserve them, but the continued snubbing of God's reminders and the covenant was too incessant. The invaders will reverence nothing. They will be like vandals with clubs, storming through a jewelry store made of glass shelves. Just to imagine a modern picture. The violence, the death and killing, the fires. There won't even be any time for mourning or funerals. And there's no allies to come and help. The chapter ends railing upon Jehoiachin, the fourth of the last five kings. His uncle Zedekiah actually followed him, and none of Jehoiachin's children ever ended up being king. And now on to chapter 23. We're going to be making a comparison to Hitler. So as Hitler was ransacking Europe and looking to go in all directions, he had a plan to conquer and absorb. There were two opinions. Churchill in England was telling people to prepare for war or to be conquered. And there was Chamberlain also in England who was telling them, relax, rest and be well for there is peace in our time. Now, the prophets that Jeremiah is scolding were as oblivious as Chamberlain, and they were dark as darkness in their hearts and their words and their plans. <laughs> they really cared nothing for God's people. In time, the people would be scattered from following these false prophets. Later, God would gather them again and one day reign. This righteous branch of David is one who will reign in a messianic era. That was to be coming in the future, but for now, there are lying prophets to shush. They are using Baal, bringing on disaster, doing deals with evil, wretched as Gomorrah. These prophets spread evil across the land. They do not speak for God, yet they claim that they do while touting about peace as they work their evil. Because of them, 
all will be cast out. God wants a memorandum to go national. The prophets claim they have the word of the Lord, but it didn't come from me, says the Lord. And finally, chapter 24. The people God would preserve, one, and the people God would allow to be decimated, two, are illustrated as two baskets of figs. One was like first fruits, ripe and sweet and desirable. These were akin to the initial captives taken to Babylon in 597 BC. Jehoiachin was on this trek of those who were hauled away as slaves to Babylon, as were Ezekiel and Daniel. And you'll remember that we read Daniel last winter. He was a young teen of about 13 walking to Babylon. He started out a slave and became the regent of the country. Strangely enough, God carried these ones away to preserve them. They were the good basket of figs. The second basket were the ones who thought they could stay in Judah and call up help from Egypt to resist the Babylonians who were on their final push to take all of Judah. Those who stay back, like rotten figs, will be only fit for discarding. Their future is bleak. They will be cursed and ridiculed and devastated. Rotten figs get thrown out and buried in a compost heap. The people who remain to fight Babylon have a similar fate. We'll continue with more of Jeremiah next week. Sevenstreamsmethod.com is the home port for this podcast. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sailing this stream. It always seems to be a bit of a rocky stream (laughs) because there's a lot of condemnation going on. But we understand There's a reason for it. Tomorrow we'll transition to the exile stream and know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Until tomorrow, I'm Serena sailing with you down the seven streams.